Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today we're going to explore another classic Parker Publishing book, a writing from J.V. Cerny. In researching J.V. Cerny, I could find very little about him. In particular, he is well known for his book, Acupuncture Without Needles. But on the back of the jacket for this book, which is The Dynamic Laws of Thinking Rich, it explains that as conclusive evidence that success is a way to go and not a place to go, the author J.V. Cerny is living proof that a career is made up of many successfully accomplished goals and duties. Today, as president of professional research, a consulting firm in human engineering, the author is proof positive of the values of thinking rich. In his amazing career, he has been a college teacher, writer, director, producer of radio and television shows. He has been nationwide lecturer, athletic trainer, and team doctor, journal editor, and magazine writer, inventor, investment maker, manufacturer's consultant, and research analyst. His life packed with organized excitement of seeking new horizons and the rich compensations that go with them is a firm proof that you too can reach for the great new life and achieve it through dynamic laws of thinking rich. Parker Publishing has a unique style of writing that I very much love and enjoy, and there are a number of chapters dedicated to laws that will enable you to become rich, the dynamic laws of thinking rich, which of course is right in my wheelhouse. I wanted to cover the first two laws. We talk about mastering your destiny and converting it to cash and developing courage and stretching your mind in your reach for fame and fortune. Both of these chapters have a variety of examples and ideas that are helpful in allowing you to think rich. How to master your destiny and convert it to cash. Dynamic Law 1. Invest in the franchise of your mind and utilize that personal standard equipment so vital to a million dollar gain. Don't wait. Turn that frown upside down. Lift your chest toward your chin. Pull your tummy in. Tighten your buttocks. Put laughter in your eyes and smile. Do it. Now ask yourself, can I feel sorry for myself in this position? Can I get angry? Can I hate? Can I argue? Can I worry? Can I fear or feel despondent? Can I fail? Your answer to these questions is simply no. Why? Think it over. Why can't you be angry when you deliberately put laughter in your eyes and smile? Why can't you worry when you turn that frown upside down, straighten your spine and pull your tummy in? What happened in that power-packed fragment of time in which a mental structure, functional phenomenon took place? Remember that you made this phenomenon happen. You were in the driver's seat when it happened and by a process called thinking, you triggered the will to act and deliberately converted yourself into the new you. What is this magic? What happened to you mentally and physically? Is there a name for it? I call this amazing phenomenon the posture of success. It's a dynamic changeover, a transition. It's a trigger for action in which you turn personal power on and off at will, a switch on, switch off coordinator setting the stage for destiny, an operator working behind the scenes. The moment you become conscious of this power, the moment full realization sets in that you are master of your destiny, that will be the moment that you will begin to achieve that which you will desire, whether you desire to make the future pay off in fame and fortune or to just have plain peace of mind. Reach for the jackpot and a million dollar approach. There's nothing phony in the million dollar approach to the future and thinking rich. You don't have to do it with mirrors. There are no strings attached. With a simple mental process, you make things happen. You psych yourself up physiologically and psychologically. As a result of controlled action, the mind, an astonishing life force, is placed at your disposal. Through thinking big, you develop the will to act. Is it a million dollar future you want? Then use your own personal powers to get it. Cut back the deadwood of mental mismanagement. Trade up to quality thinking and think yourself to success, as did an East Coast junk dealer by the name of Stanley Morton, who found himself in control of a cooking device. The machine was simple. It cooked deep and seared at great heat. 
Frying time for chicken was 10 minutes, and the possibilities for fast service became immediately apparent. Wholesale jobbers, however, wouldn't take it on. They preferred bigger profits on larger and more expensive equipment. As a result, Morton opened a retail store to demonstrate his device he fried chicken. To defray expenses on the chicken he sold it, the result was inevitable. Nobody wanted the cooking device, they wanted the fried chicken. The store became a restaurant, and the restaurant grew into a national chain. In 10 years, Morton had 300 franchise chicken frying outlets in 43 states. The case of the deep fry is the story of a junk dealer. It's also the story of how he mastered his destiny and converted it into cash. He took advantage of an opportunity. He thought rich. I saw my chances, and I took it, said Morton. It was as simple as that. Opportunity is everywhere. The episode of the chicken fryer is not an isolated case. Take, for example, a Nebraska railroad fireman who saw a need to rent tools to other people and started a small shop with this in mind. The enormous potential of this Pandora's box of rental equipment became a chain across the nation. The end result was an operation worth $2 million a year. Stop. Look and listen for opportunities, whether you are a junk dealer or a railroad foreman, then take advantage of the opportunity. Step into the future knowing that you too have the capacity for success. Be aware of your own potential powers. These are hidden powers and they make you master your destiny. The moment you set the first dynamic law of thinking rich into motion. In your mind and in your memory are the tools for tomorrow, and all you have to do is develop your posture of success. Within your brain is the magic key. Deep within those millions of potentially brilliant cells that make up the human brain lies a magic key. This trigger is called the will to act. It gives you the will to win. It's the trigger that gives you go power just by thinking big and following it through. For years, says Ken Kelleher of Kelleher Construction Corporation, I didn't think I had what it took for big time. I wasn't thinking big, I was thinking small. Then came the transition, I began thinking rich. Kelleher developed his posture of success into a science and made it pay. But there was an earlier day when everything wasn't all roses, when he built low-cost housing and was afraid to get out of his groove. Then he came up with the idea of a central prefabrication plant, his concept was to engineer the entire housing package right at the plant, transport it by truck to the site, and slap it on a slab. There was one hitch. Kelleher was afraid he didn't have enough savvy to put his idea on a production basis. He stayed afraid until he was indoctrinated with the posture of success and thinking rich. As a result, he found himself putting his ideas into operation. Ken borrowed heavily and bought a factory and a mill. He set up his own trucking fleet. He leveled non-productive hills into swamp areas and converted real estate nightmares into boom land. He gave free plots, churches, and donated school buildings. He set up country clubs and private swimming pools and power plants and sewage disposals and water utilities. He bought power guns and speed lifts and cranes. He walked the financial tightrope as he optioned chunks of geography and laid foundations so fast that they went down like postage stamps. Carriers wheeled the prefabs in. Power lifts swung them into place. Crews locked the units together and multiple houses went under roof each day. A city of tri-levels, bi-levels, and ranch dwellings with optional face changes grew where farmland had been. 3,000 units sold and Ken was still reaching. He wanted more. He was thinking big. He wanted to build high-rise apartments and motels and hotels and professional buildings. He wanted to convert his prefab know-how into big-time do-how. He was thinking rich. Today, from Maine to the Bahamas, Kelleher prefabs move by boat, truck, and grain. Giant packages and their gaunt parts move to where they become skeletons on a concrete base. Brick, aluminum, and glass dress their faces, and through the judicious use of speed processing, tight engineering, and prefabrication, Kelleher delivers turnkey operations overnight. The man who once built low-cost housing is today an industrial giant. Through developing his posture of success within his own brain, he found the magic key. How quickly can the posture of success be developed? 
You can assume the posture of success in the tiny fragment of time that it takes to snap your fingers. In one gracious second, you can tune yourself for success. You key yourself automatically to delete hate, anger, worry, fear, or the desire to hurt. You will yourself to act, and faith and courage are your strength. A sense of importance, self-confidence, and competence pervade you. You face up to this reality through the action and the reaction of mind and body. This is the key to the posture of success. This is the key that unlocks the door of the future from the inside out. It prepares you to depart from mediocrity and become the giant you want to be. Thoreau once said that men are the builders of that temple called the body. But in thinking, big men are builders of their life, their future, their career. And through thinking rich, you can engineer your own speedway to success. So turn that frown upside down. Add laughter to your eyes. Condition yourself for success. Stop jingling small coins in the empty pockets of limited living and mastermind yourself into big time. Remember that how adeptly you mastermind your personal through conscious and subconscious mental posture controls your future. It determines your forward motion and it converts your destiny into cash. If that's what you want, it will convert your tomorrows into happiness if happiness is your desire. Look inside. See yourself as you are. Are you placing limitations on your ability to be a success? Are you strangling your career with self-imposed chains? Are you saying you don't have what it takes when actually the capability for action is at your command? Do you realize that the capacity of the human brain is so tremendous that at no time in the history of mankind has anyone used it to maximum? Have you any concept of the amazing complexity of this fantastic organ within your skull? Have you ever stopped to think of the spectacular and astonishing magnitude of your nervous system? Have you ever stopped to realize that a master mixer, the brain is for sensations leading to action and that your own brain is a reception center waiting to record and interpret and store information and opinion, a repository for emotions, thoughts, judgments, and actions, a switchboard so delicate yet so magnificent that it can take you to fame and fortune just by thinking rich. Let's look at your situation analytically. Your brain, to date, has not developed maximum performance. In fact, there is no maximum to its capability for performance. There is no ceiling for thinking big, and your success is completely dependent on your ability to use your head. It is not dependent on how brilliant you are. Consider this. If you have an average IQ, and you use what you have and store up your mental skills year after year, you accomplish goals that the individual with a high IQ could never accomplish. If he refused to use that with which he has been endowed. If your IQ is just average, but your thinking is big, you are in good company with such world greats as Napoleon, Lincoln, Emerson, John Adams, and Admiral Nelson. They were not geniuses. They were not brilliant. But what they did have was character and persistence. They developed their posture of success and fired up a lot of other people with a plan of action that achieved goals. Each hit the road with his own kind of sales pitch and made it big. Each uses his head. Behind your throne is the power of your brain. Three pints of power lie latent beneath the skull. In that supercharged power pack are cells that never wear out. Brain cells have a limitless capacity and as long as the physiological and anatomical integrity of the brain is maintained, you can use your brain forever. Let's take a quick look now at its structure and performance. The human brain is an electrical device composed of three major parts, lower, middle, and upper segments. The lower segment of the brain performs automatic functions. It exerts controls, for example, over the heart, lungs, and other body parts. The upper contains areas of sensory perception and thought. The midbrain is a bridge for messages from one brain area to the other. How effectively you use this electric marvel depends on your understanding of it. It depends on how you use it to your advantage. Let's check these advantages at this time. There is no end to brain power. The cranial power factor that gives you the capability for thinking rich never stops. As an electrochemical battery, its capacity for energy is unlimited. 
because of this, there is no such thing as mental fatigue. Brain tiredness, when it does occur, is merely the result of boredom. It is not due to overtaxing the mind. Brain tiredness is due to inattention. It is due to off-again and on-again concentration and the leakage of interest. Memory, on the other hand, is a fabulous reception center. In this amazing treasure trove of filed facts are 15 trillion bits of information, according to neurophysiologist Randolph Gephardt. The memory area with constant use and as long as it receives a continued supply of glucose, oxygen and other necessary nourishment through the blood supply can continue to amass data beyond all imagination. The individual who trains his memory aids thinking big. He literally uses his head. A given number of brain cells are created at conception. Some of these cells die as the individual matures. They are not replaced, however a vast number of cells still remain. Over 10 billion of them make up the part of the brain where thinking and memory takes place. Passing from cell to cell are tiny charges of electricity about which we know almost nothing at all. How is memory stored? Dr. Gephardt indicates that no one knows exactly how memory is stored. What is known, however, is that only a tenth of the brain's potential ever gets used in a lifetime, and this is thinking small indeed. To utilize your brain and the power that it gives you, try expanding your mind and its capabilities. Take advantage of its advantages and use its inexhaustible supply of energy for thinking rich. How can you use your brain in thinking big? What must you be careful of in expanding your mind? Psychiatrist James has some answers. He points out five specific methods for thinking big. Five factors to remember in expanding your mind. One, be constantly cognizant that there is no maximum to the use of your brain. If you are normal, you have all the gracious endowments you need for success. There are powers within your brain you haven't yet tapped. Within it is a creative potential that will last you a lifetime. If you keep using it, so be cognizant of the fact that no matter how big you think your brain is capable of thinking, it may think even bigger and richer than before. 2. Stretch your mind with other people's ideas. Step up your perception centers. Fill your mental computer. Pack it full of information and sensation. Attend lectures. Listen to people talk. Read how to do it books. Take night school courses. Fill your mind with what others have to say. If what they have to say is valuable, only then will mental expansion begin. 3. Develop your capacity for mental control. A ship has a helmsman. An automobile must have a driver. And the machinery of the mind demands a pilot. To use your mind efficiently, you have to keep it under control. You have to discipline inactivity. You have to learn to concentrate. If you would take advantage of your brain. You have to develop memory and recall. With each experience, you become more adept more proficient, more wise, more capable, more understanding. With your growing capacity for mental control comes not only an understanding of yourself, but an understanding of others. And this is vital to your growth as a person thinking rich. The more reasoning you do, the greater becomes your ability to reason. The greater becomes your memory. Remember that your willpower is stored in the mechanism of your brain. So is your personality. So too is the ability to develop your subconscious mind. Four. Make continuous assignments to the computer of your subconscious mind and depend on the answers it gives you. Your subconscious mind is an amazing receptacle for information, correlation of information, and interpretation. When used efficiently and developed, the subconscious mind becomes a powerful adjunct to conscious thinking. It adds to the capacity of the conscious mind. It becomes a fabulous warehouse of information when properly used. It solves your problems while you sleep, and like your heart, is on 24-hour duty. The subconscious mind is a recovery area for everything experienced, old and new. It is more extensive than the conscious mind, and what the conscious mind forgets, the subconscious mind remembers. Lost memories may then flow back. The answers to questions may pop into place. So feed your subconscious mind continuously. School it for mood control. Determine what you will remember and think tomorrow what you feed your mind today. 5. Develop your ability to remember and recall. Memory like a muscle is only as good and only as strong as the workout you give it. Its capacity is limited only by the restraining walls which you lay down. 
Memory depends on how you use or abuse it. It depends on the acquired faculty for retaining and reviving sensations and impressions of recognizing previous experience. Put this amazing machinery to work, develop it, and trust everything of value to it that you can and never permit it to go unused. Give yourself little tests day after day to develop it. Picture and draw with words or pencil, places or things. Develop the ability to remember names, faces, places and events. Never stop funneling in facts, figures and impressions because this is the data that your subconscious and conscious minds feed back to you when you need it most. Develop your memory centers if you would think rich. The file cabinet of the mind is an amazing receptacle with an avaricious demand for information. It has no maximum capacity, its storage capacity is limitless, and how well you develop this mental depository determines the depth of your perceptions and conceptions in the future. People who have limited memories have limited imaginations. They have limited creative ability. They have conversational inadequacy, personal deficiency, insecurity, and minds blocked by negative emotions, most of which can be eliminated by proper feeding of the memory machine. Expand your memory department, whether you are an artist, a writer, a statesman, a mathematician, a chess player, or a con artist. What is the anatomical location of memory? Memory is a higher function of the human brain. It presents wide variations in its degrees of development in different people. In physiology is extensive. For anatomical location of the memory, let's consider the auditory and visual centers that stimulate memory. They are located in the brain's cortex near the posterior or back part of the left sylvan fissure. In the right-handed persons, the chief speech centers are in the left cranial hemisphere. They are usually three in number. Auditory memories of spoken words are stored and recalled in the posterior part of the first temporal convolution. The cortex is the angular gyros, has a similar function in regard to the storage of visual word memories that come from reading a book, for example. These two centers constitute the sensory speech areas. A third important or higher kinesthetic center is called Broca's area. This is in the posterior part of the third frontal convolution of the brain. Here are stored the memories of afferent impulses excited by motor activities employed in speech. It's all very technical, all very complex, and that's what makes it amazing. University professor J. Maltby Gaines states that memory is a force waiting to be used, a powerful agent that can be utilized in thinking rich. He indicates that human memory centers reproduce and identify what a person has learned or experienced. This he identifies as the faculty of recall. The faculty of recall includes learning, retention, remembering, and recognition. Sometimes it includes motor habits and skills. Experience is reproduced and how well you develop this faculty for remembrance and retained awareness of what you have already experienced plays a big role in thinking big. So why not develop the natural resources of memory? Develop the full powers with which you were born as you reach into the future of success. Remember that you are the master of your destiny, that you can school yourself for stardom and have all this and heaven too if you trigger your will to act. Remember that you are master of your destiny. Within you is the standard equipment necessary to accomplish success. So take advantage of it. Think rich. Develop the posture of success that puts you in the driver's seat. Remember that your mind is a creative giant. And all you have to do is turn on the floodlights of understanding in your mind. Deliberately get rid of the dark corner. Stretch your mind to think big and think rich. Think there is such a thing as success for you and success can be yours by setting up the posture that achieves it. Capsule recap. 1. You can create your own posture of success. 2. Your mind is the control center of your career. 3. The feel of success is in your hands. 4. There is no end to brain power, no brain fatigue. 5. You are the master of your destiny and can convert your future into cash just by using your head. How to develop courage and stretch your mind in your reach for fame and fortune. Dynamic Law 2. Courage defines the man and his goals. It is his basic key in thinking big. It's the flame in the fire of his future, and any man who would think rich must stretch his mind to meet the challenge. Courage went into the development of the H-bomb, guided missiles, and cobalt therapy for cancer. It went into the development of computers, of drugs, and of methods for processing food. 
It took untold hours of work and grief to develop Gemini flights so that the fantastic walks in space would be possible. And all this is more than examples of genius. It is a monument to courage and the courage career catalysts that our God sends in every industry and way of life. What is a courage career catalyst? According to neurophysiologist John Aldrin Hodges, a courage career catalyst is a fuel that helps you accomplish goals you might not otherwise achieve. He feels it is controlled urgency and inspiration. It is the central activator that sends a person into action to achieve that which is desirable. Whether you're chasing a desirable sex mate or a career on Wall Street, the end product of this drive becomes actuality only by converting dreams into action. It does this by thinking big. In your own efforts for thinking rich, reach beyond the fatigue barrier of mediocrity and move into the future. Develop the career catalysts that find their origin in the will to act and their impetus in the posture of success. Think rich the way Marion Maxwell did when a new state highway and urban renewal project washed him out of the restaurant business. While other small tradesmen sat around bemoaning the bad breaks, Maxwell worked on an idea for a one-stop highway service. His plan was to provide both auto and human servicing and take advantage of the potential profit in the millions of Americans on the move. After some frustrating experience with zoning boards, loan companies, oil companies, food wholesalers, equipment companies, and builders, he finally came up with a presentable package. He obtained the capital he needed, leased land and buildings on a major turnpike, developed a homey building that featured an all stainless steel kitchen for the production of charbroiled burgers, franks, steaks, and country fried chicken, a special room for gourmet foods, novelties, gift, fruits, and candies, and in his first year he cleared a 34% return. Marion Maxwell didn't go down in defeat because a new state highway went through his property. He used this obstacle to stimulate his thinking. He developed his courage career catalyst, and it came up a winner. Courage defines the man in thinking big. Courage is the key to accomplishment. It is the basic button push to light up the floodlights of understanding. Courage defines the man and his goals. It is basic boldness and daring, a fearlessness and a kind of spirit and conduct that faces up to reality and makes the fight for a goal pay off. Courage is that quality of mind that enables a person to face pain, danger, or difficulties without fear. It is something within a person, a native commodity with which you are endowed at birth. It's a resource waiting to be developed so that the appropriate action to fit the existing circumstances can be brought into focus. Once you know it's there, its source is inexhaustible. And this is not just in the case of Marion Maxwell who saw an opportunity to take advantage of a new highway going through. It worked the same way with Jess King. Jess had an idea that people could play golf indoors winter or summer and not have to tramp the course. He said he could make money stimulating fairways and 18 holes of golf in a space 11 by 16 by 11. He said all the standard shots could be made. The ball would have free flight. Nobody believed this, however, and none of the local bankers went for the idea at all. Finally, he got an insurance company loan manager to see his test model. The man tried it. He chipped. He putted. He drove the ball into an illuminated electronic screen depicting the course. The machine instantly measured the distance and the direction of the ball. It recorded whether he hooked or sliced, and he stood there in amazement. I'm sold, he exclaimed. When do you want to get started? Courage propels people into new inventions, discoveries, and fresh fields of endeavor. It helps them across new horizons, and this power flow never stops. In building your personal pattern or courage, and in reaching for fame and fortune, I suggest that you develop a particular key agent that motivate your courage career catalyst. Here now are the important steps that Marion Maxwell and Jess King took in their personal reach for success. Here are key factors in thinking rich. 25 steps for developing your courage career catalyst. One, laugh in the face of those who would turn you down. If you have faith in your ideas and confidence in your ability, let no one talk you out of them. Resist distractors. Go after what you want. Despite opposition, work to win. 2. Live life as an adventure. Accept challenges. Meet them head on. Never ask for pity or for sympathy. Be self-reliant. Use self-control. And seldom yield to impulse. 3. Think and act maturely. In thinking rich, step up to maturity and say you are unafraid that you can take care of yourself and then do it. 
or keep educating yourself. Maintain a study plan. Keep opening new avenues of thought. Read. Go to school, as I indicated before. Get special instruction. Widen your knowledge day after day. 5. Erase cowardice. Cowardice is fear of the unknown. It is fear of being hurt, and education and training are its cure. 6. Don't try to escape reality. Face up to facts as they happen. Do your duty. Be willing to face that which is disagreeable no matter how insurmountable the problem may seem. 7. Let happiness come naturally. If you seek happiness, you will not find it. Seek attention, crave pleasure, and hide from life's headaches, and you will confine your thinking to fantasy rather than richness. You will be out of touch with the world, so make specific efforts to make the most of what happens, and happiness and contentment will come of their own accord. 8. Never fear loss. If you experience a defeat, promptly accept it. Utilize the experience to broaden your concepts. Permit each defeat to stimulate your thinking. The experience will teach you how to handle the matter should it reoccur in the future. 9. Control your emotions. Bravery more often than not is the control of fear. It is the efficient use of physiological reactions which set you up for flight or fight. 10. Master your morale. Courage begins with a personal feeling of invincibility. Setting the hero tempo through mastering your way of life gives you inner security and strength. It gives you the self-confidence you need for action. 11. Roll with the punches. When your thinking is different from that of others, conform to their thinking until you can step out of their league. Make a point of adapting to any environment. Avoid stress and conflict unless you find that stress and conflict is stimulating. Adapt easily to change. When ready, step out of the status quo and permit nothing to reroute you from your great new life. Nothing shall disturb me, said the great Dutch philosopher Spinoza. And if you would live up to the bigness of your thinking, face up to what's going on around you, accept the bad breaks and tough luck that make other people cry the blues. Bad breaks and tough luck are par for the course, so accept them. Move on. Roll with the punches that come to anyone who has the courage to think rich. 12. Stop evading the issue. You can't just dodge facts for a lifetime, so accept life as it is. Assume your obligations willingly. Take on responsibility. Live life as it is until you're more capable of attaining life's fringe benefits for yourself. 13. Know what your goals are. 14. Develop a plan of action and daydream it through to success. Remember that success is more than a reward. The trouble with too many material-minded people is that they want rewards for mediocre efforts that produce only mediocre consequences. 15. Love what you're doing. 16. Create, invent, and devise something new each day. 17. Give willingly of yourself and expect nothing in return until you see it doesn't pay off. 18. Never be completely satisfied with what you have accomplished. 19. Keep your want for success uppermost at all times. 20. Be willing to make sacrifices. 21. Work at being personable and well-liked. Love people. Don't just like them. 22. Delete everything negative from your life. 23. Have a rewarding family life. 24. Find inner peace through spiritual communion. And 25. When you think you can't go another step, that's the time to get up and go. That's courage. That's success. What is a successful man? A successful man is just an ordinary person like Marion Maxwell or Jess King, men with courage and high purpose who set the aforementioned 25 catalysts into motion. They are men who put thinking rich to work. Success is a possibility for everyone because no one is doomed to sorrow. No one is condemned to unhappiness and suffering. So don't channel yourself as a conformist because conformists seldom have courage. Stand up. Speak out. Be more than just an ordinary man with high purpose. Use your natural urgencies. Make your ideals live. Avoid dissatisfaction that does not lead to satisfaction. At the same time, never reach for something that is mentally and physically beyond your grasp. Search for new challenges and respond to them if you have a restless soul. Keep achieving. There is nothing wrong with being condemned to dissatisfaction with status quo. If you have a goal, there is nothing wrong with being temporarily condemned to unhappiness if you are on your road to a career. Just don't confuse peace of mind with apathy. Be restless. 
move into the future with your career and achieve what you want. Your heart may be at peace, but keep your mind and your body moving. Believe without being a conformist. Believe in new things. Be concerned with new things. Care. Maintain a spirit of dissatisfied satisfaction as you look tomorrow in the eye and say, when opportunity knocks, I'm answering the door. The moral of the story is don't muff your opportunities. Take advantage of them when they happen. Permit nothing to stand in your way. Never be too tired or too busy. Expect to walk a little with unhappiness if you would eventually find happiness. Above all, don't miss your opportunities. Assume that million-dollar posture of success and think courageously. Think success. Think rich. Ascend gently the inclining plane of courage. Don't fight the roadblocks in moving up the inclining plane to success. Certainly, it takes courage to think rich, and for the neophyte who has always thought small, there are certain frightening aspects to it. The point is, don't jump leagues too soon. If you have a limousine tastes and a second-hand car pocketbook, lay the groundwork for getting what you want, but maintain a dissatisfied satisfaction with what you have right now. For example, Ken Kelleher had to make the transition from thinking in terms of low-cost housing to big-time capitalization and giant projects. It demanded a change of mind, a change of attitude, a change of concepts. And it doesn't take just know-how, it takes in plain and simple language guts. At first, there's something frightening about thinking rich. For those who have never thought big or thought rich, there's something frightening about it. And the answer to that is nothing more than to stop thinking small. In building up to thinking big, deliberately rid yourself of small thinking. Instead of a few dollars, think in terms of thousands. Then think in terms of millions. Accommodate mentally to each step upward. Bridge the gap with understanding and comprehension. Accept this new thinking and large amounts will no longer bother you. Accept them as a matter of course. And you will soon find that you no longer think big about money matters alone, but you will think bigger in all directions. And the process is the same. Think big. Whether it is in terms of farm, acreage, factory production stocks, and bonds owned. Building. Erected books written or money desired. Whether you are a massage parlor operator or a scientist, think rich. Whether you're a riveter or a nightclub operator, think big. The point is that it is up to you to go after what you want in the upper brackets by ascending the plane of accommodation slowly. Get acclimated to big thinking to accomplish your objectives more easily. For this purpose, here are 10 specific steps to take. They are soul-searching steps that demand a decision in helping you build courage. How to create a basic design for courage. 1. Make an honest self-appraisal. Pull no punches. 2. Be frank with yourself. Decide whether it's worth it. 3. Act consistently with your opinions. 4. When you make up your mind, move, don't wait. 5. Eliminate self-pity. 6. Be true to your ideals. 7. Cross no bridges in advance. 8. Pre-plan, pre-plot, pre-arrange everything to cut down the possibility of anything misfiring. 9. Courage is within you in an innate form, so bring it out and act. 10. Control your reactions to fear. Your belief in yourself is prerequisite to thinking rich. It doesn't matter whether you're thinking rich or thinking big in terms of being a religious leader, a politician, or an industrial foreman. What does matter is that you believe in yourself so strongly that it becomes infectious to those around you. If your belief in yourself and your ability is so strong that it manifests itself in top performance, then you will indeed be a leader. Belief is power unswerving dedication to an ideal idea or goal is a driving force packed with magnetic social and business attraction it drives others who would hitch their wagons to your star remember that success breeds more success and when you believe in yourself you are on your way to everything desirable doubt your abilities and you hit the skids think big and you have a magic wand in your hands think small and failure is imminent to avoid failure because of lack of courage at the right time, here are some words to the wise. What not to do on the road to success. 1. Make no excuses for temporary setbacks. Forget your losses promptly. Brainwash yourself of defeat. If one route closes, take a detour. 2. Never pay tribute to failure. 
and the act of thinking rich erase from your mind the lost motion of failure. Your mental turnpike has no speed limit, and it should have no roadblocks if you plan on using your head as a throughway to success. 3. Never worship material things. Success is one thing. Material things are something else. Success is often crowded with material things because they mark having arrived. They do not necessarily mark an agile mind looking for new horizons. 4. Use no state of mind that says, I could have won if. Eliminate from your life all prefabricated alibis. The fact that you lost one race is of concern to no one. Forget your pride, accept losses, gracefully profit by them. Remember that it's all part of the game. 5. Never entertain doubts about yourself. If you would be courageous, deliberately wash doubts from your mind. Think only in terms of accomplishment and success. Deliberately replace negative thinking with a dominating desire to achieve. Your degree of belief in yourself is marked by everything you do or say, and your forward motion as a leader is determined by the self-belief which you maintain. It is determined by the depth of your thinking along this line. If you know that you have what it takes for doing your job, you will be more courageous about doing your job. You will be more apt to deliver top performances. If you believe that you are big, you will not only be big in your eyes, but you will be big in the eyes of others. Achievement never comes to the uninspired. It comes only to those who respond to stimulus, those who receive energy from the power release of their emotions. It comes not just with seeing a beautiful sunset, but painting it. It comes with love as well as with the need for love. So make the most of inspiration to stimulate you to greater courage and even greater endeavors. Remember that your mind is the fountainhead of power. So aspire to inspiration and courage by stepping up your mental dynamo each day. Stretch your mind. Think big. Think rich in your reach for fame and fortune. Capsule Recap 1. Your mind is a creative giant. 2. You can stretch your mind to yield fabulous returns on small daily investments. 3. Never be ordinary. Be extraordinary and step away from the herd. 4. Courage is a natural resource. Bring it out. 5. Believe in yourself and you believe in the best. And so this concludes a discussion of the first two dynamic laws in the wonderful book, Dynamic Laws of Thinking Rich, a new resource that we have in our ongoing classroom on prosperity thinking, something that we've discussed since the very beginning of the podcast. And if you check out the Prosperity Revolution playlist, there is so many amazing episodes where we talk about this stuff. And it's always good to add additional knowledge and concepts to our thinking about prosperity. The two big takeaways from this are memory and courage. You need to develop your memory. Your memory is an important part of your imagination. And the greater your memory and the greater you access your memory, then you will have a greater creativity and imagination, which helps you in so many and variety of ways. This particular book doesn't give a lot of specific ways that you can enhance your memory and we can have a whole other episode on different ideas that work in expanding your memory but if you simply make it your intention to enhance your memory and you work on concentrating on it and you will find better and better ways that are specific to you to increase your memory he talks about something called the posture of success this instantaneous way that you can Turn your frown upside down, lift your chest toward your chin, pull your tummy in, put your laughter in your eyes and smile. It's this instantaneous posture that you can obtain, an anchor for success. It's specific to you, but you can do it. When you work on your memory and your mind, you learn the power of expanding your mind, which brings us to the second dynamic law, which is courage, developing courage. It allows us to stretch your mind in your reach for fame and fortune. And there's a discussion of developing your courage career catalyst. Some great ideas here. Laughing in the face of those who turn you down, living life as an adventure, thinking and acting maturely, educating yourself, erasing cowardice, not trying to escape reality. There's some really good ideas and suggestions that are given here. But if you want to truly be prosperous, you got to take that step and that is where action becomes involved and you will not take the appropriate action if you have any level of fear. You need to have that courage and faith that what you're doing will work and if it fails, you'll find a solution or learn from it. So 
I want you to take from this that you can expand your mind and you can expand your ability to take action through your courage and I guarantee that you are thinking rich when you do that. Courage, memory and a posture of success are the first important steps to lead you to prosperity. And we will go back to this book and expand on some of these lessons because there's some really powerful lessons to add to our understandings of attracting wealth, money, and prosperity into our lives. Please share with me your techniques that you use to enhance your memory and to give you courage. Any technique or idea is helpful for we are a laboratory of consciousness and we are learning from each other. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Please put a like on this video. It really helps my video out. Put a comment down. It helps with the algorithm. So thank you so much. And I'm honored to read these words to you. It's an honor to teach, learn with you about these amazingly fascinating concepts. I'm sending all my love and light to you. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.